Okay, how's it going, people? I've been kind of paying attention to the Capcom speculation that's been going on from one major report. I'm probably going to be looking for that report in the near future, but this is about the annual report that I did. As well as going over that, um, you can actually look at my older video to see what I had to say about Capcom in a very, very professional manner. Now, this is actually going over the details, so you actually know what's going on inside the company and what I think is going on, not based on the speculations, but what's based on the actual report. Um, people are going on and on about how Nintendo is trying to buy them. I don't think that's going to be the case because Nintendo is not financially solvent to buy them. Um, there's a number of reasons because they're doing their own thing. They are... They already slashed the water's prices. I don't think they're going to be looking to do Capcom and buy it and have it as a second party company because that's not how they do business and I don't know what they're going to do with all of the assets of Capcom. Now, let's go ahead, let's go into the annual report, um, page 95. Now, I'm going to sit here and read this from an economic perspective. I'm not going to sit here and go over every last little thing because the main thing that you really want to know is what's going on at the top of the page. The major shareholders is exactly what I'm going to have you, everybody look at. The max, or who are the major shareholders? You have Crossroad Limited, the Master Trust Bank of Japan, the Chase Manhattan Bank, uh, the Nomura Bank, Street, State Street Bank, then you have Kenzo Sujimoto, Misako Sujimoto, Yoshiyuki Sujimoto, Japan Trustee Services Bank, and Haruhiro Sujimoto. So you have a, the Sujimoto, the Sujimotos are one side of the banks, and the other one is, uh, ah, I messed that up. I apologize. But you have the Sujimotos on one side, and you have the banks on another. What is going on here? Well. As you can see, the banks want to have a lot more short-term profit. If you've looked at any other part of the, um, the, the report, the fact of the matter is that they've been kind of getting suckered by Kenzo Sujimoto. What Kenzo has been doing, he's been looking into the entire lifestyle of being like this wine merchant and all of his money. He gets to do what he wants and people are kind of getting tired of that. The banks want to have a short-term profit. They want to keep getting more and more sales. Now, the Sujimotos want to just keep the, the train ride going. That And it's pretty lucrative. They keep the stocks. They sit here and vote. And everything is a status quo. But this is very, very chaotic, especially in an economic perspective. Now, nobody's talking about the shareholder issue. That's why I'm talking about it. What you have here is going to be banks against the Sujimotos. And that seems to be what's happening here. Now, remember, in the last one, I said that there were 3,000 workers for Capcom. When there's 3,000 workers versus 13, 14, 15 people that basically make decisions in the company, you're going to have a fallout. Now, nobody is really talking about this fallout because I don't think anybody's thought about it. I am looking at this similar to the THQ buyout what happened there was a fire sale on the ips the workers got decimated got taken down and scattered among the winds and what is happening here is that the banks are probably going to sit here and say sell this sell this sell this sell this sell this you're not going to have a board of directors they're the ones that control it the shareholders control the board of directors they're influenced by them and now that the board of directors can't be um changed out especially with a lot of Sujimoto's there what's probably going to happen is they're going to sit here they're going to have someone else take over the company and I want to go through each of them now Microsoft has come up as the most likely one I'm going to sit here and go against that the reason being is that when Microsoft bought Rare they put them on the Kinect titles now I get this from Review Tech USA so I my point is that Microsoft has an even more authoritarian type of um, style of, you know, dictatorship or, you know, controlling what they do 
then probably any of the workers are going to actually understand Capcom. It's going to be also be a cultural difference. What is going to happen, they're probably going to take some of their bigger IPs and put them on, you know, Xbox, like the Street Fighter franchise, this Killer Instinct is kind of dying out a little bit. Street Fighter V or whatever, that's going to be one thing. But the other problem is, Capcom, for the most part, I mean, they have some multi, multi-universe, multi but for Microsoft to come in, I don't think they're going to give them freedom of choice to decide what they're going to do. Another one, Sony. Now, Sony for me, I mean, they just had that fire sale. They just kind of destroyed um, their brand like Naughty Dog. I mean, Neil Drunk, Druckmann, whatever the hell, it, how the hell, however the hell you say his name, basically got a good karma kick in the ass for giving Anita Sarkeesian that award, but that's another story for another time. For the most part, Sony is doing a big restructuring, and I don't think they would want to get Capcom right now. Now, it would probably work because they would give Capcom some autonomy, but you'd have to get rid of the board of directors, and I don't think Sam or uh, Sony is willing to do that. Um, Nintendo would be very, very interesting. Would they sit here and get rid of the Tsujimoto's? Because the Tsujimoto's don't really do shit for the company. I'm being very honest. Um, Suji, Kenzo Tsujimoto, for the most part, has said he's going to go against piracy, and for all of the discussions that he's had, he is out of touch with what's going on in the digital era. He sits here and says he's going to try to implement more DLC, and that's just a recipe for failure. Everybody already knew that, that it was not going to work, you know, long term. It was a short term strategy, and pretty much it destroyed them. Just like Ubisoft's um, crazy crap is sitting here and having a, an effect as well. Now, as I talk, the one thing I do want to stress, I mean, anything's up for grabs, but the banks, if you're looking into them, they're going to be looking for short-term profits. I'm expecting, I'm expecting that they're not going to want to hold on to IPs they want to sell. So if they start to strip the company, a lot of assets are going to go. Capcom has arcades, they have pachinko parlors, they have a lot of things that are Japanese centric and any American company coming into it is not going to understand that and it's just going to tell them to sell, sell, sell just so they can sit here and push IPs and that's not really the case. They don't understand what's going on. Now there's another option if Capcom was willing they could sit here and start selling shareholders to the developers and to the people that are in charge of the unit and kind of see how that's going to work out for them but unfortunately not a lot of them are seeming to do that now the Yoshi, the um, Ono situation kind of makes sense in this this aspect in this light what is happening there is that he's basically this has to distance himself because I don't think he wants to be a director because when the shit hits the fan, he's probably going to be one of the first few people to go. Maybe he wants to do his own individual product projects to sit here and make something brand new. So that way he looks better for whoever eventually buys them out. Now, there's other people, Shu Takumi. I believe that if anything, if you start stripping the personnel, a lot of the big guys are probably going to go to other companies. But I don't know what's going to happen to all 3,000 workers. The 16 um, guys at the top, or 15, 16, what's going to happen to them is they're probably going to get stripped off, fire sold, they get make a lot of money. But the workers are basically going to be the ones that get screwed. So with 3,000 people, you got to sit here and kind of figure out what's going on. Now, one of the other things, as I looked at the financials, there are retired benefits. Those retired benefits are pretty much going to be given to either A, the CEOs and COOs, or it's going to be given to the shareholders in a higher stock value of some sort. Now, these are speculations, but again, THQ being what it was, Infinity Ward being what it was, 
These are examples of what goes on in a capitalist organization. Now, as I said, there's other alternatives. If they really wanted to do more, they'd probably sit here and scale back on the authoritarianism that they have, the corporate compliance that they have. Um, I think that's in page 45 to 46 if you want to know. But this is my take on it. It's an economic perspective. It's supposed to be sitting here and talking about it and just another t just another chance to sit here and tell you basically what's going on. It's the banks versus the Sujimotos. The workers are going to get screwed either way. And the fact of the matter is they're probably going to sit here and start taking money out of Capcom to start paying off the shareholders, which is pretty much, I guess you could say, class warfare. I mean, some people understand that, some people don't. The workers get screwed, stick it to them, and then pay the shareholders as much as you can, as quick, quick as you can, to sit here and stay financially solvent. That's exactly what Cap um, Sony did, and that's why I don't really want to see Capcom go to them, but it is a possibility. Um, I know people are talking about Amazon. Okay, Amazon is pretty much really, really horrible at game making. I I'm sorry. I I having them as a publisher... They already are horrible at ebooks and they try to control everything. Then you want to give them to Capcom and you think that that's going to sit here and help them? You got to pay attention to the companies, man. And the companies, for the most part, are the ones that are trying to do like all of this crazy crap to other companies. And that's pretty much it. That's all I really had to say about the subject. Hope that hopefully you got something out of it. If you want to see the annual report, it'll be down below. And I'll see you all next time.